Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. Um, so, quick intro on our next moderator, Chris Hickman. Chief uh, Security Officer at Key Factor. Um, he's responsible for many, many things at Key Factor, as you can imagine by his title. Uh, he leads many of their client success initiatives, uh, voice of the customer, keeps them in their leadership position. He did comment to me that this was the marketing description for himself. Um, Chris previously was Director of Technical Services at Alacris, which was the organization acquired by Microsoft, which has become the platform in their Identity Manager product suite. And Chris has lots and lots of experience working with Fortune 100 banks and organizations and uh, defense. So we'll look forward to Chris moderating. All right, welcome back everybody. Hopefully you... Uh Enjoyed the break, and uh, I have the pleasure of, uh, of bringing us to uh, the wrap-up and then uh, eventually, uh, hopefully, some uh, libations and refreshments. Uh, my name is Chris Hickman. I'm the Chief Security Officer at uh, Key Factor, for those of uh, you who may not have been in the room when I was introduced. Uh, so excellently by Robert. Thank you very much, Robert. I appreciate that. And thank you for cutting down my bio as well, because it is really long. Um, I have the pleasure today to introduce uh, a uh, couple of uh, very esteemed speakers, uh, starting today with uh, Bas uh, Vesteban. I think I got that right. I'm, I'm going to mess everybody's name up. And Bas is uh, with Cloudflare, and uh, he's a mathematician with an interest in quantum computing and cryptography. Uh, he currently works uh, as a research engineer with Cloudflare, and previously has uh, held positions with uh, PQ Shield, University College in London, and Digital Security Group at uh, uh, Radbow University. So welcome, Bas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much also for the invitation. Let's see how this slides here. Okay, perfect. Um, it's great being here and seeing uh, people really care about the post-quantum migration, but I, I noticed that people are talking about it in the future tense. Uh, what, will, what will it look like? Well, I'm calling it the post-quantum internet is here now. Uh, but first, I want to say a few words about Cloudflare for those who, who don't know the company. Um, we, we, we started as a CDN, uh, so we're known for our DDoS mitigation. Uh, we do all the things now. We have uh, 111 DNS, we have serverless platform workers, and we are now into SASE, zero trust stuff. Uh, but, uh, 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 we serve approximately, depending on how you count it, 20% of all domains and process roughly 46 million HTTP requests per second. Um, we really care about uh, uh, keeping the internet private, secure and fast. Uh, we were one of the, 10 years ago, at approximately the same time as Let's Encrypt, we introduced uh, a, back then SSL certificates for free. We've worked on uh, DNS over HTTPS, private relay, oblivious HTTP, and more recently, encrypted client hello. And the topic of this day is migrating to post-quantum cryptography. All right. Uh, I want to give an overview of the, in this talk, of the current state of the migration, uh, uh, what's still laying ahead, and what are the unique challenges for doing this on the whole internet. So, why this is hard is because the internet at large, so not just an internal network, but the internet, is very diverse. There are many different users with varying different devices, which can be very old, very new, and we, uh, uh, some can be updated, others can't. Uh, we can't assume everyone is on fiber internet uh, or uses a modern CPU, uh, can store state or update at all. And another problem is that despite that we were careful to design our protocols uh, uh, to be upgradable, if this flexibility is induced, in practice it turns out that we lose it. This is called uh, 
protocol ossification. All right, and an example of this is the one of the last migrations we did, migrating from TLS 1.2 to TLS 1.3. Um, the, the early versions of TLS 1.3 were completely undeployable. Uh, it turned out that some middle boxes didn't do the version negotiation properly, and we couldn't just deploy it, even though we had the negotiation. Um, so what we end up doing, uh, 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 I say we, but it's, it's the whole, uh, 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 lots of industry and, and academia working together. What we end up doing, and I think this one was an idea of Facebook, is to make TLS 1.3 look like TLS 1.2 on the wire, 1.2 on the wire, so that uh, uh, a broken client couldn't even tell TLS 1.3 is going on. So this was a painful journey, but after six years of testing and in workarounds, uh, it's a success. So we are at 90% uh, of our visitors are now using TLS 1.3. So uh, yes, that's correct. Qu Quick is also TLS 1.3 under the hood. Now, um, if, if there's one takeaway uh, 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 from my talk, it's that, and it's been alluded to before, in in previous talks, is that there's not just one post-quantum migration. Uh, uh, it will depend on your organization and your needs, but for the internet, it's very clear there are two different migrations, which are very important to distinguish. There's the migration of the key agreement, and there's the migration of the signatures. So the key agreement is to counter store now decrypt later. So we need to upgrade as soon as possible. Then there, there are the signatures. For the internet, it's not that important to upgrade these now. Well, they have to be replaced before the arrival of quantum computers. Uh, the problem is that it will turn out to be much more difficult. Okay, key agreement, the, the easier one. Um, back in 20, 2019, we did a large scale test with, uh, with, with, with Google. Uh, uh, we deployed uh, HRSS, which is a lattice based cam roughly similar to Carver, not, not the same, but roughly the same. Uh, and they deployed it as well, and we enabled it for a, a fraction of all traffic and, and, and see what do we see? How does it perform? Um, and uh, it's something went wrong with the slides, so I'm, I'm very sorry that it's... Uh, anyway, uh, what we saw is that actually we tested three things. We tested no PQ, the control, we tested the lattice one, and we tested an isogenous one. And there are three lines on the right, but you can basically only see two. That's because the lines of the, of the, of the, of the lattice one and the control are almost indistinguishable. By the way, this lattice one is a hybrid, so we're doing both classical cryptography and we're doing post-quantum on top. So even though we're doing strictly more work and we're sending more bytes over the wire, the performance is nearly the same. So that, that, that was good news, but we saw some issues. Uh, uh, we saw certain middle boxes, which would, because of the larger, because these letters based key agreements are larger, uh, uh, they split the first packet uh, when you make a connection. And we know, and uh, 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 we noticed that some middle boxes, they would, they would break, they would not work, uh, despite that it's allowed by the standard. Um, if that were not the case, it might well have been that, by th that back then we, uh, this uh, uh, was ramped up. Uh, instead, we had this protocol ossification, uh, and it's, so what we did in the meantime is that uh, 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 Google left it on a very low fraction and has been uh, uh, very good about reaching out to the vendors where they saw it didn't work and worked with them to, to fix it. All right, so 2022 uh, uh, is quite ex exciting. Uh, uh, we we, we um, coordinated with some uh, other early adopters. Uh, to agree on the integration in TLS. And we have enabled uh, uh, on all our websites, so that roughly 20% of the internet, a uh, post-quantum key agreement. Um, and in 2023, Google did the same. And they are slow, and Chrome is now slowly ramping up traffic. As you can see uh, on the graph on the right, 
Um, uh, this is from August to October. And at the moment, 0.35% of all incoming connections are post-quantum secure now. Um, that's great, that's, that's really great. So there's very promising early results. Um, as of today, which is great, we haven't seen these middle box issues where there are these hard failures. I, but as these ramps up are slow, it means we might see more when we're ramping up, but for now, it looks good. It's also not just these hard failures, it's also about, um, about performance. Uh, we, we want the internet to work well, not just the average person or the median, we want it to work well also for the bottom 1%. It looks like we're on a good path, and it could well be that in 2024 we will see a double digit percentage post quantum key agreement. So, key agreement. It's urgent, and it's the easier one of the two to deploy. Uh, and we're on track for a pretty substantial deployment next year. This took five years. All right, now the hard one, signatures. Why is it hard? Well, there are many more parties involved. For key agreements, we, we, we just update the library, we update the service, we update the clients. Uh, we get the standards, but with signatures, there are many more. We have to get certificate authorities on board, uh, HSM manufacturers, uh, CT logs, uh, and basically every server admin that cobbled together a PKI script where there's RSA somewhere in that script, that has to change. Also, I think that uh, uh, we might also see that uh, different legislatures will have different requirements. Uh, some insist on level three, others on level five. There's a disagreement on which combiners to use, whether to use hybrid signatures. And there are so many parties involved here, it will be very hard to get uh, everyone on, on, on one or maybe less than 10 lines. The second problem is that there's not a great, an all round great post-quantum signature scheme. Um, top two are what we have now, or well, two of them we have now, which are not PQ, and the, the bottom row are a few of, the, of those that are post-quantum. Uh, the, 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 the precise numbers don't matter. Uh, just notice that there's no green row uh, of the post-quantum ones. The, the best of the worst is uh, Falcon 512. But I have to urge you to be careful because Falcon has an Achilles heel. To sign, to, to have acceptable signing performance, or will have fast signing performance, I mean, what is acceptable is relative. Falcon requires the use of a floating, a floating point arithmetic. And we do not have enough experience to implement this safely. It's, uh, there have been implementations where there have been timing attacks. It's really hard to do this correctly. And on commodity hardware, Falcon should absolutely not be used. It shouldn't be used. Uh, so we shouldn't use Falcon for TLS handshake. This isn't a problem for uh, signature verification. There, Falcon is fine. So Falcon could, if we need it, be used in certificates. But uh, another issue uh, Falcon is uh, Falcon 512 has these nice sizes. Falcon 1000, which is the next up in security level, level 5, much larger again. Uh, but Falcon 512, well, well let's. Uh, we don't know. Let's, let's hope it's. It, it, there's no indication Falcon doesn't reach. Falcon 512 doesn't reach security level 1, but it's uncomfortable that the next step up is much larger. The third problem is that there are many signatures when you make a connection on the web. There are, there, there are six. Um, uh, the, the certificate chain, those you might know, but there's also the, the receipt from certificate transparency. I suppose not everyone knows what certificate transparency is, but this is, uh, 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 was set up uh, uh, roughly, I think, eight years ago, uh, after, uh, I must say, a, a Dutch CA, uh, 
<laughs> made an oopsie, which I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed for, uh, where they misissued a certificate for, uh, I think, gmail.com. Uh, well, Google noticed this because in Chrome they have these, the, the certificate hard-coded, and then they can see when that happened. Uh, but that was also a shock that uh, 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 the community set up a, a system which is called certificate transparency, so that CAs need to register certificates with at least two of these logs, independent logs, so that they can be audited. It, it doesn't prevent misissuances, but at least you can see for your domain which certificates have been issued. And these two SCTs are, are a vital part of that. But it makes that we have six signatures and two public keys when you're visiting a website. And I'm not even talking about DNSSEC now. And, and if we're just using the, the Lithium 2, we're adding 17 kilobytes. 17 kilobytes. If we allow ourselves Falcon, we're looking at eight. Well, the question is, is that too much, right? I mean, we had a look uh, two years ago. So what we did is we, we um, uh, on our normal traffic, we added uh, some extra dummy certificates at the end. So you can just plop some extra certificates in the response. And we added some certificates on the end to see how does it affect performance. Um, as you can see uh, on the arrows on the right, adding, uh, 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 so the lithium will add 20%, 20% uh, slowdown, and Falcon 10. Um, on the right, you see there a bump. That bump on the right is um, it, it's a technical thing. It's due to the initial congestion window. And what you need to know is that as a CDN, we have a price that's high because we're close to our customers. But the typical bump would be to the left and actually would be around 20. So actually, for uh, most users, it would be a slowdown of 80% of the TLS handshake if you're using the lithium too. For Falcon, it's it's better. It's 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 it's, it's around 15-20%. But of course, performance is not. The, this is just the sizes. But performance is of course not the only thing, because there is also protocol ossification. On the right, we look at the, uh, the 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 number of successful connections or missing connections actually, and what we see is that around 10 and around 30 kilobytes, there's a suspicious bump in the number of failures, which means that probably a bunch of middle boxes or server software or clients don't like it if your certificate chain is longer than 10 kilobytes. And another bunch it breaks after it's bigger than 30 kilobytes. This is actually problematic for hybrid certificates. Because what we can't do, we can't switch everyone at once. In, on the internet, you can't, have a, you can't really have a successful flag day. What we need is we need to switch people slowly, right? Either the client or the server, typically first the client, then you switch, first the server, then you switch the clients. And if we all start sending these big chains of hybrid certificates, then we break everyone at once. Instead, what we can do with TLS is we can have the client tell us what signatures do you support, and then slowly roll it out on the client and have the server send either the post-quantum chain or the, or the classical chain. But again, a lot of server software, I mean, most you can only install one certificate, so that's going to be a lot of work. So, what I'd say, it's not great, not terrible. If we have to, to if we know that in five, if we see now that in five years there will be a quantum computer, we, we, have, a, we have a solution, we, 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 we can move to it, but it won't break the web. But the performance impact will be noticeable, and I'm afraid that the performance impact is, is bad enough that a lot of people will not move to post-quantum certificates yet, which will delay adoption. Uh, luckily, uh, NIST took note, um, uh, and they are, as has been told before, uh, they, they have called for a new round, the on-ramp for new signatures. Um, I will cover these tomorrow in, in a breakout, and tomorrow I'll also check that the slides work properly. <laughs> uh, the short of it is that there are a, 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 a few very promising submissions, but the security is, is very unclear at the moment. It just needs time. Uh, I think we cannot assume that uh, uh, 
uh, just a better post-quantum signature scheme will come out and solve all our problems. Uh, but we can hope. Um, in the meantime, there are other things we can do. Uh, instead of hoping that we can just drop in post-quantum crypto, we can try to reduce the number of signatures. And there are so several, several areas of, 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 of uh, lines of attack here. There it's, uh, we can leave out intermediates because browsers ship them anyway. Uh, we can use key agreements instead of a handshake signature. Um, or we can do a bigger overhaul uh, where we rethink how we actually do the web, uh, web PKI. Because the marginal cost of changing uh, the web PKI is now lower than ever. If you want to change anything about the web PKI, now is the time. Whether it will work, uh, that's of course a second. Anyway, I will discuss uh, these workarounds, these coping mechanisms, uh, also in the breakout tomorrow. Um, so, all in all, signatures, less urgent, but the path is very unclear. Uh, there's a real risk we will start migrating too late. Um, that's not all, right? The web is not just TLS. Um, there's DNSSEC, which has much harder uh, uh, size constraints. And uh, it's not just all key agreements and signatures. There's also quite, we've recently seen the adoption of, of more advanced cryptography, uh, um, unlinkable tokens, anonymous credentials. Uh, 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 and for many of these more advanced cryptographic primitives, there are no post-quantum alternatives yet. So there's a lot of research to do as well. Um, all right, <laughs> that's it, thank you. Any questions? Excellent, do we have any questions in the room for Wes? Oh, there's one up there. Start down here and then I'll walk my way up. You get the magic cube. But uh, what are the promising signatures in the on-ramp? <laughs> Cheeky question. Um, I think Mayo looks really good if it's not broken, uh, because there's a no. But I'll talk more about it in the session tomorrow. And also the UV variants. Uh, one of them would be would be really nice. Um, but I'll talk in more detail. I mean, it's um... a question here about uh, the information that was presented for the. Protocol ossification slides. Uh, we showed the breakages of a 10k, 30k. Yeah. Uh, am I correct to assume that we are assuming there that the certificates are sent in one blob, and would it not be solved by using certificate discovery information in, in, within the certificate to fetch a second certificate? No, this is the this is the size of the list of certificates. So each of the certificates is the, so the first few are yeah, well, whatever they are, and the, the and we added a bunch at the end, each of a kilobyte. So it's not about the size of the certificate, but the size of the chain. It could well be, by the way, that there are clients that break on a big certificate, which we haven't seen yet, but we know that at least there are ones that break at ten and thirty. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? I have one very quickly. 46 million certificates or uh, connections per second, was that right? Uh, requests per request second. Per the second. number of TLS connections is around, uh, from the top of something like that, 10 million per okay. second. Yeah. So 10 million going to post-quantum algorithms, knowing there's bigger key size, greater latency, so on and so forth. What type of capacity planning uh, needs to be taken into account to start to predict? how you're going to be able to do that as, uh, as standardization comes and this becomes a more common um, occurrence. Uh, it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on that. Good question. Um, so for the key agreement, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, 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 with our usual traffic, it, it is a change. It will, it, will, it will cost us a bit, but not, not that much. Also on the server side, it, uh, Kyber is a bit uh, uh, Kyber is very fast, but it's not, uh, it's not it's not free, so we do add some compute um, because it's just the handshake and not the rest. Uh, actually, I think it's about maybe we need to buy a s an extra server or two, or, but it will depend on, on, on yeah. Um, the story with the signatures, if we use the more costly signatures, will of course be very different. There, if, I mean, if we're adding 17 kilobytes to every handshake, that's a much more significant thing and that will be, uh, 
it will be hard to convince uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 budget people to switch now if we add 17 kilobytes on every handshake. Great. Um, no just a quick question online, uh, and then we'll come back to you, and then I think that's all we're going to have time for. Uh, TLS 1.3 public adoption is low at the moment. Oh, is it? <laughs> is the one you have tested a new or updated version of the same protocol? No, TLS 1.3 is not. Uh, TLS 1.3 adoption is not that low, uh, at least on the internet, right? I mean, I don't know what you do on your internal networks, but we are. Uh, at over 90%. Um, so TLS 1.3 does not need to change. The only thing that changes is, um, is the, the, the code points. The, the it's, it's flexible. Just like to TLS 1.2, you can add cipher suites. To TLS 1.3, you can also add what we call named groups, which is a misnomer. So we don't need to change the protocol itself. Excellent. One last question here in the audience. Yeah, I, I've done some reading in the past on the influence of handshake size and round trips for people with slow connections, uh, especially if you have a very high latency connection like a satellite internet connection. What's the influence on, uh, on, on, on of the performance metrics you've talked about on uh, those use cases? So. Uh, we don't add round trips. That's the, well, at least with the key agreement. With the key agreement, uh, post quantum key agreement, it's just two extra packets and the number of round tip trips stays exactly the same. With um, That's not the case with, uh, with uh, post quantum uh, signatures, right? When you use the lithium 2, then uh, that bump on the right, that's an, the height of that is the, round, is the median round trip. And that bump actually moves to the left for typical. Uh, so yeah, post quantum signatures will add a round trip, and that's bad for performance. Excellent. Thank you very much. And uh, so please join me in, uh, in thanking uh, Bas for his uh, presentation today and the information. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.